Okay, all of us who are here, you are most welcome. We welcome you to another great session uh, on skills and career development. And today's session will be about self-discovery and self-development by our lead facilitator, Ambrose Chibuka. So please, all of us who are here, you are most welcome. We welcome you to... So we, we want to know who is Ambrose Chibuka, first of all. So Mr. Ambrose Chibuka Mchiri is an education, a careers and human performance specialist. Since 2001, has undertaken over 100 consultants assignments with a variety of organizations locally and internationally, including United Nations agencies, government departments, local and international NGOs, banks, private sector firms, church establishments, universities, and other educational institutions. Between 2000 and 2005, he taught at Uganda Matters University, where he has also served as deputy director of the Center of Extra uh, Neuro Studies and Distance Learning, as well as the founding head of Department of Good Governance and Peace Studies. Prior, he served as the pioneer community development officer for Gazi Catholic Diocese. That was in 1997 to 1999. He is a member of KIU Council and Innovation uh, Strategies at the university. He's also a board member of the Public Policy Institute. Ambrose is also the president of the Uganda Matters University Alumni Association. The rare combination of his passion, vast experience, deep insights, and hands-on approach awakens individuals and organizations to their untapped potential and inspires them to operate at peak levels. He's a consultant with Success Africa and the Institute of Advanced Leadership. He's also an author of two books, on youth empowerment, that is after university, what next? And remarking the youth. And he has written extensively youth empowerment and re-imaging careers. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Ambrose Chibuka Mchiv to speak to us. Ambrose Chibuka, you are most welcome. You can take over. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Allow me to share the screen. So I'm very honored once again to be uh, with this, this audience. Um, I'm grateful to Yaka for, for having invited me once again. This is my second time having a, a career session with uh, the, the students and I think some teachers as well and some parents of the, the students who study with the Yaka online uh, learning platform. Today, without uh, uh, wasting any more time, I will introduce our, our subject for the day, which is self-discovery and uh, self-development. Uh, the, the coinage of this topic reminded me, uh, Mr. Moderator and uh, the, the audience, it reminded me of my initial uh, initiatives in regard to the field of career guidance. 
uh, I started my journey uh, in this area, specifically in 1998. And I remember I used to go around uh, secondary schools and conducting talks for both students and uh, teachers. And at one point I remember I used to go to schools and I would see that the teachers were more, more attentive, more interested in, in what I was saying than the students. And on a number of occasions, teachers would ask me, do you have any handouts for these talks that you are giving us? And I didn't have handouts. But one day when I went back home, I reflected and I, I was like, if, I, if people are asking me for, sorry, uh, my video has been off all along. Um, I, it had skipped my mind. So I, I said to myself, if people are asking me for handouts, this most likely means that they're asking me for a book. So in 1998, I set out to write um, a book. And in 2000, I published my first book and I gave it the title, Self-Discovery and Development, meaning self-discovery and self-development, remaking the youth. And my idea was that from my observation, the youth had been misled and miseducated. And they were not being empowered enough to live optimal lives. The expectations in my view of young people seemed to be off the mark. And so I perceived that we needed to do something as educators and as parents to remake the generation of, of young people. Now, you will note that the young people I was talking about then are not necessarily still uh, the, the young people today in, in, in that sense. So this theme of today is at the center of my heart, given that background explanation. My first book was on this specific uh, theme. And I'm very happy that it's because of the encouragement uh, and the feedback I got from people uh, that I, I developed, I decided to develop this further. And up to today, I'm still in this field. I'm still in this field. So I would like to share with you a couple of insights. Those who are familiar with me know this book, After University, What Next? It's actually a book that I, I wrote the first edition in 2003. But in many ways, it's, it's, it's informed by the first, the first book, which is Self-Discovery and Development, Remaking the Youth. And throughout all my works, my points of concern are consistent as you are going to see uh, the issues I'm going to raise in, in my presentation. Mm -hmm. So, again, those who have been uh, uh, part of my sessions before and those who are familiar with my literary works uh, will be familiar with this fable that I like so much because of its educative uh, imagery. The ego thought he was chicken. And, and simply put, I, I read this, this fable from Anthony de Mello. And uh, he was narrating and saying, once upon a time, there's this uh, old man, he, he's walking through the bushes and he stumbles upon an eagle's egg. And he picks the eagle's egg and brings it home and puts it together with the eggs of the chicken. 
and this eagle's egg was was hatched, and uh, an eaglet came out of the egg, and so because it was hatched together with the chicks, it grew with them, and so it did what actually the chicks did. They were free range, so they went about scratching the soils in order to get something to eat. And so they would spend the whole day like that. And the fable says that one day, however, when this eagle, together with the chicks they, have, they had grown, one day the eagle saw a bird flying, flying very deep in the sky. And the eagle was fascinated. And at one point, it, uh, it looked at the chick next to it and said, wait a minute. How come that one looks like us, but he's flying very deep in the sky? And the chicken next to it told it, yeah, that one, he is the king of the air. In fact, he's the king of the birds. He was born to fly. As for us, we were born to walk on the ground. The best we can do is to hop and jump just for a few meters and we are back on the ground. And so the ego took the answer for what it was, but somehow it wasn't satisfied. Moments after the ego turns to the chicken next to it, the chicken that had offered the answer and said, you said that one is the king of the birds and you said he was born to fly, who is he? And the chicken next to it say, yeah, that one, he is called ego. Now, remember this bird is an ego but it was hatched and grew together with a chicken. So it picked the identity, at least in its mind, it picked the identity of the chicken. And the fable ends that this ego actually eventually died in its old age and throughout its life, it never flew. So Anthony de Mello, when he's concluding the, the narration, he asks, why do you think this ego never flew for the whole of its life? Is it because biologically it could not fly or because of other factors? Now, I don't know. I, I, I would want to pause here for a moment and uh, I'll be glad to receive at least two uh, two responses from the audience, if you will allow, Mr. Moderator. Why do you think this ego never flew for the whole of its life? Yes, there is a hand from Tony already. Um, hello, members. My name is Tony. And I'm going to tell you the reason why that ego never flew. Yeah, um, the ego never with the birds. Yeah, no, it grew with the chick, like the hen. So the reason why it never flew, it thought that it, it was meant to be like the chicks. So like hanging out with this fellow eagles, yeah, like that. So it never discovered his talents like. That of Antigo, so it was that, that, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you very much, Tony. Um, you are saying, yeah, it never discovered uh, who it was. I see, uh, Mr. Mondorisa, you are in better position. Uh, I see other hands. Yes, I'm, I'm on. We can pick a hand from Katerega. Okay, go on, Katerega. Uh, Katerega uh, is unable to unmute. We can pick Victoria. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes hello. Here. We can now hear you. Hello. 
Yes, Go Miss ahead. Ambrose, I'm very glad to uh, be part of the participation. Thank you. The challenge of the ego thought was the chicken is that uh, of uh, the poor mindset, the poor mindset of the, uh, the ego, growing thinking that it could not do anything other than living on the ground and feeding on the level of the ground. Mm. Yeah, it couldn't do anything uh, beyond what it did. Okay, great. Thank you. The last one. Uh, maybe in the chat, because I see the other hand is now down. Yes, in the chat. What, what's the comment in the chat? In the chat, we have Fatima saying, because of other factors, uh, first, he believed what he was told, and secondly, uh, he was not with the right group. Ah, he believed what was told. Of course, what was told was was by that group, and 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 so you are saying you, therefore he wasn't with the right group. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I would like to leave this fable to you, for those who are encountering it for the first time. Reflect more deeply on it. And for those, I suspect many of you have heard it uh, uh, before, but I also invite you again to think more deeply about it. Because you know what? Uh, <laughs> this fable is not really about that, that ego. It's about you and me. Eh? It's about all of us. And as we go deeper into the session, we are going to figure out exactly what's, what's that similarity between us and this ego that missed the chance to fly, although biologically it could fly, but socially it was programmed not to fly. And there is a danger. As we talk about self-discovery and self-development, there is a danger that, that we face. Uh, I like what the philosopher Seneca once said. He, he remarked and said, you see, the tragedy of a person's life is not dying. Because if you think about it seriously, really, dying is the surest deal in life. All right? So all of us are assured that death will come. So that shouldn't be even, it shouldn't be news. It shouldn't be something to worry so much about because it's the surest deal in life. But Seneca says that the tragedy of your life, the real tragedy of your life is what dies in the inside of you while you pretend to live. What dies in the inside of you? What died? The, the potentials that died in the inside of this ego while it was still alive were the real tragedies of its life. Because it, it did not fly at all. And yet by its nature, the way God created it, it had the potential to fly very deep in the sky and even to take advantage of the storm and just glide in the storm without flapping its wings, but never ever did that. And because it never flew, it actually never even got a full spectrum of the environment around it. Because when you go up, when you fly high, then you are able to see the panoramic view of your environment. And this is how egos actually feed because you see, once it is up there in, in the air, it is able to spot its prey. And we know how the egos feed because it, it spots the prey when it's up in the air and it only comes to the ground to pick that prey. If you see the kingfisher, that, that ego called the kingfisher, it will, it will see a, a, a fish in the water when it is up in the air. And I think ideally it will calculate the distance 
it will even figure out the angle from which it has to attack and what energy it has to use because it must pick it from the water and it makes no mistake when the ego comes, boom, it picks and it doesn't waste time on the ground and it flies with its prey. So that's how it's supposed to live. And now this ego was reduced to the life of chicken, which are just scratching the ground by trial and error. The ego does not descend for prey by trial and error. It will have spotted the ego. So it comes with precision. Now, all of this lifestyle, this ego never tested. And you know, <laughs> Like I said, this fabo is not about this ego. It's, it's about you, it's about myself. How we meander through life simply because of one thing that we don't know ourselves enough. That those of us who are meant to soar through life, we scratch through life. We feed by trial and error because we don't know ourselves enough, just like this ego. I would invite you to check out on the internet. I, 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 I believe this story is there. I've never checked it out on the internet, but I read it in, uh, in 1996 in a book, uh, The Acre of Diamonds, about this guy who uh, had uh, uh, land that had a lot of stones and uh, apparently he figured out there is nothing much he could do with this land. So he sought to, to sell this land and migrate to another place where he could have land where he could grow crops. So anyhow, he, he succeeded at getting a buyer for this land and uh, migrated and he went on to become a farmer somewhere else. But one time he was reading in the papers only to learn that the guy who had bought his land discovered that the whole land was full of diamonds. You can imagine how this guy felt. And the question is, what if, <laughs> what if, your life is an acre of diamonds. You know, in, uh, in, in, in Africa, generally speaking, we are confronted by the challenge of the, the unfavorable socioeconomic environment around us. And so young people will do their best to run away from Africa at whatever cost. I don't know if you ever watched a documentary by a guy called Soria Samora, who covered, uh, his, he named his documentary Out of Africa, and he covered young Africans uh, trying all their best to run out of Africa through uh, Northern Africa, through the Mediterranean, and they take a huge risk. Many of them drown. Many of them drown in the ocean before they can be able to cross to Europe. But for many of them, for most of them, it's a matter of life and death. So why? Because they are running away from Africa, which apparently is, is uh, impoverished, which is uh, the chances for good life are slim. Uh, and they would rather play the gamble of life and death than stay here in Africa at home. I mean, we of, of late we see lots of we have seen lots of stories about young Ugandans languishing in different parts of the Middle East and so on. But but for most of them, really, it would have it would be out of frustration. But think about it more deeply. What if yourself, what if myself, I'm an acre of diamonds? of diamonds, what if yourself you are an egg of diamonds? What if the environment in which you are is an egg of diamonds and, and, and you run away from it, you run away from yourself 
only to discover later that you are running away from the very diamonds that you are looking for in life. This, I, I, I have dwelt a lot on this as a matter of introdu introductory remark, but I think in many ways this fable or these two fables give us the gist uh, of this topic. And I think that they, they provoke us to think more deeply about our, ourselves. And I argue here on this slide that the most valuable thing you have in life is you. It's not your education. It's not the qualifications you will get from school. It's not the money that your parents give you. It's not even the money that you'll make. It's not the property of your family. It's you, the most valuable thing. And, and, and so, again, going back to Seneca, that the, the tragedy of your life is not death, but what dies in the inside of you while you live. You see, the way we have been brought up, both from home and in, in school, how we are educated, how we are mentally programmed, we are programmed to value the things outside of us. And in fact, we tend to master the things outside of us than master the things inside of us. So for those of you who are fascinated with computers, I'm sure a number of you who are online now, you know how to even develop software. You are fascinated by programming. You can manipulate that gadget that you are using now to attend this session. It could be the smartphone, it could be a laptop, it could be the desktop, whatever gadget that you are using. Many of you have mastered these gadgets inside out. We have mastered technology. We have mastered the subjects that we study. The geography, someone asks you what is geography, or if they ask you to write an essay in economics, or they ask you uh, mathematics, you know, to balance this equation. We, we are very good at all these things, the external things. We can split the atom, as it were, about these outside things. But when it comes to us, if someone gave you an assignment and told you, I want you to write a, a four-page essay about yourself, you might find it very difficult. But if they ask you to write a, a, a 10 page essay about Uganda's economy or about whichever subject is most is your favorite, you'll have no problem doing that. And that is our tragedy, because we know so little about the most valuable thing in our life, and that is you, that is me. So, and, and, and uh, in Latin, they have a very uh, interesting uh, phrase, qui se vincit, bis vincit. He or she who conquers oneself conquers twice. Like it's a double conquest if you manage to conquer yourself. Or simply put, it's difficult to conquer oneself, but once that is conquered, then everything else is conquered. So because of that, I'm also very attracted to what the, the Bible says about life. Now, for those of you who use it as a book of faith, this will even make more sense to you. But for the rest of us who don't use it as a book of faith, I invite you to use it as a book of just academic expose, like you, you use any other, any other book. Okay, you can use it for uh, uh, just intellectual purposes. Don't be bothered by the spiritual aspect. So either way, it works for all of us who are in this session. Now, in Proverbs verse 4, chapter 4, verse 23, it says something very beautiful, a very short statement. Now, if you look at the, the, the new 
uh, international version, it translates it as such. It says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the SV version, it says, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow the springs of life. I wanted to use this version because of this phrase in red, the springs of life for from it flow the springs of life. Imagine your life, it's springs. This scripture is saying, it flows from your heart. So it says, be vigilant, guard it vigilant with all the vigilance. Now, the common uh, edition, CEB, says more than anything you guard, more than anything else you guard, protect your mind. For life flows from it. Life, like your life. Somewhere in the scriptures it says, as man thinketh, so is he. As you think, the way you think, that is your life. So shouldn't it, if, if the quality of my life is determined by what is in my heart or what is in my mind, the heart and mind are used interchangeably in this sense. That's why it's the same verse, but you see one edition uses mind, another edition uses heart. I'll invite you to reflect more on that on that verse. But for me, what it says is that, oh, wait a minute. So what's most important in my life is actually not the subjects I'm studying. It's not the combination. It's not the course I'm going to study at university or in um, whatever college I'll go to. No. It is what is in my mind and what is in my heart. Now, Based on that, I want to go deeper and suggest, in my view, by the way, the things I'm, I'm sharing with you, these are lessons I have personally distilled from life. So I will not tell you that I have read these. In fact, if you look at these four logics, I typed them about 15 minutes before the starting of the session and they were fl flowing from my head. But these are, are things I have deduced with, from my experience in life. So I'm presenting to you four logics of life. The first logic is that in life, you do not become what you want. No, you become who you are. So <laughs> you will meet lots of people telling you about their dreams and their dreams are basically a reflection of what they want to be or what they want to do. But they will not necessarily become that because if who they are is not aligned to that which they want to become, they will not become it. They will not get it. So that's the, the first logic. Hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, the, the deeper meaning as I go along with the presentation. The second logic is who you are determines what you become. This is very connected to the first logic, but I'm, it, it's expounding the first logic by saying that who you are determines what you become in life. So I know that this session we are having is about careers and careers are basically about, you know, how you want to position yourself in life, what you want to be in life, the position you want to occupy in society, how you want people to take you and treat you, your status, how you want it to be in, in society. And I'm here to tell you that that is good, but. That, that is just the outcome of something else. Who you are determines 
what you become. In other words, it determines your status. So what is this who you are? And the third logic is in order to get for yourself, you must give of yourself. Hmm. In order to get, so you want to get this powerful job, yes? You want to become this powerful person. So you want a, a high status, whatever you define as high status, that is a personal issue. And, and many times we say, we want to become successful. Now, successful is a personal a definition. It's, no, it's not a generic definition. So whatever it is that you are saying, you want, in order to get it, you must give of yourself in order to get for yourself. And this takes us now to the question, so what do you have to give? Because the fourth logic is connecting to that. It is saying the value you get in society is determined by the value you give. So it's not about wishful thinking, the status you want to occupy. And I dare emphasize, it's not even about your papers. Even if you got a first class degree, that first class degree will open, might open the gates for you because people might get the impression that, oh, this is a brilliant chap, you see? but it cannot sustain you there. What appears on your transcript and on your certificate cannot sustain you in the job. It is the value that you give. And that value is not the paper. The value comes from inside you. So given those, those four logics, I would like to play for you a, a, a video. Uh, hopefully it, it does play. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, moderator. Sir Uganda. Uh, Mr. Ambrose, uh, they can't hear you well. Mr. Ambrose? Uh, sorry, Ambrose, you are getting okay. the volume. Hello? Maybe, uh, you did, maybe you could uh, stop sharing, then you share again, but share computer audio. Uh, share computer audio. Yes, at the sharing screen. Okay. 
So did you hear anything at all? No. You need to unshare. I need to unshare. Then share again. Now when that before selecting, you click on share computer audio. Be, be, before selecting? Yes, the, that one is there at the bottom. Uh-huh. This share computer audio, click it. Okay. Then you select the page. Okay. Ah, I'm, I'm not able, I'm, I, I can't see it. Um, Uh, I can actually share it from here if you want me to. Please, please do share it from that side. It will be easier for me. Okay. Thank you. Man, thank you, moderator. Fellow Ugandans, we all know that whenever a baby is born, there's a lot of excitement in the family. Especially for us grandmothers, we keep calling the mother to ask how the baby is. And the mother will always tell you, let's say when I called when my granddaughter was uh, six months, like, oh, she's great. She's now sitting up. She can sit up? Yes, that is quick. Then a year later, I wish to, to wish her a happy birthday. And I ask, what can the baby do now? Can she walk? I said, walk? She can run. I'm like, wow, that is quite, quite quick. Now, four years later, this girl is in nursery school, and I go there, and she is in the middle of a circle of other young children. And they are singing that song, which most nursery schools sing, What Can You Do? So she is asked, what can you do? And she's like, oh, I can run. I can jump. I can sing. And whatever she says, the rest of the circle sings. I can run, I can sing, I can jump. That is nursery school. Now, 10 years later, I meet her and ask, what, what is happening now? Oh, I've just finished P7. I'm like, great, so what can you do? And the mother is like, she has just finished P7. I'm like, okay. The question was, what can you do? The mother is telling me she has just finished P7. And I let it go. Then, seven years later, the same child will have finished senior six, and they will bring her to your office to tell you that, uh, you see, Junior has just finished senior six and is looking for something to do while waiting to join your university. And of course, you ask that nursery school question, what can Junior do? These questions no matter. Is it just my side or it's general? I think uh, Gerard went off slightly, network. Ah, okay. I think we could be getting some lessons learned from that brief talk. Yeah, the only, the, 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 yeah, the only challenge is that the core of the, the she hadn't reached the core of the, but anyway, uh, we. I in, is my volume coming? Uh, you didn't share screeners. I mean, you didn't share computer audio as well.
Okay, uh, in the chat, we had, uh, we had some questions. Yes, please go, go on. Uh, someone was asking, how can they get the other book of, after university, what next? Oh, uh, okay, uh, they can get it from St. Paul Bookshop on Kampala Road, opposite King Fad Plaza. But, uh, if, if we get an opportunity to complete this, this uh, video, we'll do that. Uh, if Gerard can share with, with you, if you are not in the same location, but let, let, me, let me go on. The, the point that uh, Victoria Sechtoleko is making is that, wait a minute, what actually matters in life is what you can do. And she's bringing Hello. out the, she's, she's, she's bringing out the irony. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, the video is ready. The video is ready. Okay. Let's, uh, let, so I stop sharing? Yes. Okay. Chairman, thank you, moderator. Fellow Ugandans, we all know that whenever a baby is born, there is a lot of excitement in the family. Especially for us grandmothers, we keep calling the mother to ask how the baby is. And the mother will always tell you, let's say when I called when my granddaughter was uh, six months, like, oh, she's great. She's now sitting up. She can sit up? Yes, that is quick. Then a year later, I wish to, go to wish her a happy birthday, and I ask, what can the baby do now? Can she walk? I said, walk? She can run. I'm like, wow, that is quite, quite quick. Now, four years later, this girl is in nursery school, and I go there, and she is in the middle of a circle of other young children, and they are singing that song, which most nursery schools sing, what can you do? So she is asked, what can you do? And she's like, oh, I can run. I can jump, I can sing, and whatever she says, the rest of the circle sings. I can run, I can sing, I can jump. That is nursery school. Now, 10 years later, I meet her and ask, what, what is happening now? Oh, I've just finished P7. I'm like, great, so what can you do? And the mother is like, she has just finished P7. I'm like, okay, the question was, what can you do? The mother is telling me she has just finished P7, and I let it go. Then, seven years later, the same child will have finished senior six, and they will bring her to your office to tell you that, uh, you see, Junior has just finished senior six and is looking for something to do while waiting to join university. And of course, you ask that nursery school question, what can Junior do? These questions normally go to mothers because they are the ones who normally go around looking for jobs for their sons. What can Junior do? The mother looks at you and says, he has just finished senior six. The question was, what can Junior do? And the answer is, he has just finished senior six. And looks at you with those eyes which like tell you, what do you expect him to do? He has just finished senior six. So, of course, to make life easy, you ask the mother, what does Junior want to do when he goes to university? I don't know. He's waiting to go to university, but you, the mother, don't know what Junior wants to do at university? Of course, you decide to make life easier, and you ask, <clears throat> what is Junior's dream? Where does he see himself five years from now? Because if you get an honest answer to this question, it will help you place Junior in your organization. Then the shocking reply comes, I don't know. You don't know what your son is going to study at university. That means you don't know your child's dream. So, of course, questions start running around my head. 
If the mother does not know what Junior's dream is, who knows? If the mother does not know what Junior's dream is, who is helping Junior nurture this dream, mature this dream, and actually celebrate with him when he achieves this dream? Or, God forbid, should he fail, be there for him when things fall apart? Fellow Ugandans, Uganda has not been easy before COVID. After COVID, it is not going to be any easier. We are all going to need somebody to hold our hand. And what I want you to keep asking yourself, whether you are a young person, old person, but as long as you are listening to me, I want you to keep asking yourself, what can I do? Then two, what can Junior do? We all need a helping hand. Because when there is a helping hand, when there's somebody listening to you, one, it gives you hope, and with hope, there is always a possibility. With hope, you see alternatives, and definitely with hope, you can never give up. Fellow Ugandans, the one thing I want you to remember after this conference is just that question. What can I do? What can Junior do? I thank you. Yes, I think that is the video. We can yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so very much. So, uh, can I continue? Yes, we can continue because I don't see anything uh, in the chat. Pardon? I don't Great. see anything I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that we have managed to complete that video. It's a, it's a short clip, but it's, it really says it all for me that you see the, the higher we go, the, the bigger the tragedy becomes because if in kindergarten, if even before kindergarten, you are excited, oh, the baby can now crawl, oh, the baby can talk, oh, can walk, can run. And then when we grow, you are in senior four, they ask you, what can you do? Oh, it's just in senior four. What can you do from campus? They even ask you, you see, some, sometimes they ask for working experience and some, some people say, but are these people mad? You see, I'm, I'm from school and you ask for working experience. Being in school is no excuse for not having working experience because it is, it is you, your life that works. It is not, it is not the papers. And you can make yourself useful, you know, any any time in, in, in any context. So I want to thrust from what Victoria has just said uh, into three tips for authentic living. And these will give us the gist of our subject today. Now, the first tip is discover yourself, which is the subject of the day. But what exactly that does this discover yourself mean? You mean, you, maybe someone is about to ask me, you mean, uh, I don't know myself, I'm here. I'm not lost, so why do you tell me to discover myself? I'm not lost in the first place. I know where I am, I'm here. No. You are more than what you see. And, and maybe even... You are not what you think you are. Because you may have a perception of yourself that is a result of the conditioning of the chicken around you, just like the ego was. So when we say this, discover yourself or self-discovery, it is something deeper. Now, in, in this, this very book, After University What Next, I developed uh, a model. And that model, I call it the life management pyramid. So when, when you look on the screen, on the right side of the screen, you will see that pyramid there. And I'm saying that if your life were a pyramid, the best of that pyramid that gives it stability, that gives it a foundation that enables it to stand, the best of that pyramid is what I call exposure there, 
all awareness. That your pyramid stands on your awareness. Your awareness about two important things. One, self-awareness. Your awareness about yourself, or of yourself. And then secondly, environmental awareness. Your awareness about the environment in which you live, in which you operate, the environment that surrounds you. It could be your, your, your immediate family environment. And then you can expand that to your, the environment within your community, the environment within your school, the environment within the city or township or the sub-county where you stay, the environment in your district, the environment in the region, the environment in the country, and the environment in the, the, the East African region, for example, the environment in Africa and the global environment. And still this environment, you can break it down to the economic environment, the political environment, the social environment, the cultural environment, the geographical environment itself. And, and so you see, environment itself is, is so broad. It can be broken down in many dimensions. And the issue is the more aware you are about your environment, the easier it is for you to make decisions that are most productive. But even before we go to the environment, we say the first dimension of awareness is self-awareness. You knowing yourself well enough, knowing, for example, your temperament, knowing what makes you sad, what makes you mad, what makes you tick, what makes you very productive, knowing what you are very good at, what you are poor at. We are going to see uh, a little more details about, about that. So we, I'm, I'm saying that there are three powerful tips for authentic living. One is self-discovery, discover yourself. Two is discover your environment. And three, to prepare for the season. You just heard Victoria Sechtole Co, Honorable, talking about the, the post-COVID or the, the COVID-affected environment in which we are operating now. It's a new season. It's a season that has unveiled a lot of opportunities, but it's a season that has also buried certain other possibilities. The possibility of, you know, uh, people having uh, classrooms that are crowded. So that is going to have a lot of impact on many things. But also new opportunities have been opened. When we talk about the season, even before COVID-19 struck, already we were running on the narrative of we are in the fourth industrial revolution. We are talking about robotics. We are talking about automation. We are talking about the internet of things. We are talking about big data, analytics, all of these things. You as a young person who is looking to build, building a, a prosperous career, all of these things are in the environment. It could be the local environment. It could be the global environment. They are in the environment. And the more aware you are about them, the better for you. But now this third tip is saying, it's not enough for you to be aware. What is even of ultimate importance is for you to prepare for the season. If you are talking about fourth industrial revolution, what is it about yourself when we go to self-discovery? What is it that you have discovered about yourself that you will be able to use as the anchor, as the ticket that takes you to the forefront in the fourth industrial revolution. What, what value are you going to add to people's lives within this fourth industrial revolution? Regardless of what subject you have studied, regardless of what you want to capitalize on, whether you have studied history, history also has a place in the fourth industrial revolution. If you are going to be a storyteller and your, your, your storytelling capabilities are going to make for you a space 
on YouTube and we are going to be looking for your videos because you tell nice stories about the history of, of Uganda, about the history of your community, about the history of technology, about the history of whatever it is. That requires you to prepare for the season. So self-discovery, discovering about the, uh, your environment, and then using that awareness of yourself and of the environment to now prepare adequately for the season that we are in. Once you combine those three, yes, please go on. We have a hand from Ngorobe. Yes, Ngorobe, uh, please go ahead. Yes, I think he has gone off. Can I proceed? Uh, okay. Yours, hello. Okay. Yes. Go on. Yes, please. Uh, I'm here, but the, the internet, the internet is a bit disturbing. I'm not able to pick you properly. Um, Your I'm very internet sorry about is that. not stable. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. So what, what might happen if I'm speaking to Ngolove is you, I think, will be able to watch this again on YouTube when they have uploaded it. All right, all right. Yeah, thank you. OK, all right, so all right. uh, gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, allow me to go on. Um, so if you look at the life management pyramid again, I'm saying that the second step is choices. We make choices based on the level of awareness. If, for example, you, you, you make a choice for the course you are going to study after secondary school, that might be in a, in a college or at university or in any institution. The choice you make is based on your awareness. If you are not aware, for example, of the existence of certain courses. If you are not aware that you can blend certain skill sets, you will not even opt for it. You will not choose it. Now, the reason you have not chosen it is because it does not exist. It's, it's not because it doesn't exist. No, it's because you are not aware of it. So the person who is aware of it is, 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 is the same thing about scholarships, for example. If you are not aware, you may be coming from an impoverished uh, family background, from a community that qualifies to apply for MasterCard scholarships, and you can get funded to study at university for free, and they are funding you very well. You will not even apply for these scholarships. But the person who knows meaning the person who is well aware of what is happening in his or her environment will apply for this scholarship and will get it. So this is, this is how powerful awareness is even in shaping the kind of choices or decisions that we make. I'll stop there for now on this pyramid in the interest of time, and I'll move to the next slide, which helps us to understand what we mean by self-discovery, what is hidden in the self. Now, I, in 2016, I wrote a very small book and I gave it the title, Demystifying Capital. I have, and in this, this book, what I was basically expounding is a model of capital, my model of capital. And I'm saying that capital is in six forms. Unfortunately, normally when we talk about capital, we usually reduce it to money or financial capital. First, the word capital comes from the Latin word capitus, which means the head. Mm -hmm. So the head here can be understood from two perspectives. The first perspective is that that thing which is making the heading, which is on top of the rest of the things. So when you, for example, are writing an essay, you give it a heading. Heading is, is that um, statement that stands out, that is on top of everything else, that is, gives you an indication of what you are about to read. 
So we can talk about the head from that perspective. But also we can talk about the head as in this, the physical head. So either way, capital means that which is most important. And I'm saying now, and that is from the Latin etymology, which is capitus, which means the head. And I'm saying now that I have, I developed a model and expounded it. And according to my model of capital, capital appears in six forms. And here is the bad news. The bad news, which is also the good news, is that financial capital is number six. Financial capital is number six. Physical capital is number five. By physical capital, I mean if you have a car, you have land, you have, of course, you have a land title, you have a building, you have all this physical property. That is number five. The first four are the most important. In fact, I dare say, the last two, that is financial capital and physical capital, are derived from the first four. If you do not have adequate quantities of the first four, it is so hard for you to have the last two. So what is the first form of capital? Intellectual capital. So when you are embarking on discovering yourself, you ask yourself, mm -hmm, what kind of ideas do I have? What is my thinking about life? What quality of ideas? If someone came to me today and said, do you have an idea in which we can invest money? Do I have it? In fact, the reason why you guys are converging on this platform this afternoon to listen to me is not because you know me. It's not even because you care about me. It's simply because when you saw the advert, you suspected that maybe I have something of value to share with you in form of ideas. That is the reason you are attracted to this session. Whether you will come back if they advertise another session where I am the presenter will depend on if the things I say on this platform tonight do add value to you, do make sense to you. So the quality of ideas you have is what will make people value you, is what will create space for you. In the Bible, I think in, the, in Proverbs 18, 16 or 16, 18, I've forgotten chapter 16, verse 18 or chapter 18, verse 16, one of the two, it says, a man's gift will bring him before great men. In other words, a person's gift will bring that person. So the, the, the intellectual capital that you have, the quality of ideas. So ask yourself, and you, you can go ahead and even now do a stock taking of yourself, do an inventory of what kind of ideas do I have? That is intellectual capital. The, the, the second form of capital which can help you in discovering yourself is spiritual capital. Spiritual capital here simply means that, look, <laughs> Wayne Dyer has argued that we are not human beings with a spiritual experience. No, we are spiritual beings with a human experience. That the greatest force that drives your life is actually spiritual. There are forces unseen. Things like the sense of resilience that you have, the sense of determination, the sense of persistence that you have, the sense of focus that you have, the sense of purpose that for you, you know, it's, you, you, it's so clear to you that for me, this is what I'm here to live my life for. And this is what I'm going to spend my life on doing. The sense of mission. Now, all of these are spiritual forces inside you. And they are the ones that drive your life. There is a reason why 
John will stay awake the whole night to burn the midnight oil to make sure that they are reading this economics, to make sure that they are working on this project, Transnight, without extra pay. And there is a reason why Jessica will not do it or John will not do it, that by 9 p.m., he or she will say, uh -uh, me, no, I'm out of this. I'm tired, I have to go and sleep. And then John is burning the midnight oil. The difference between those two people, they may all be knowing what to do, they may have the right skills to do it, but the difference is that spiritual energy, the spiritual force to say, I will go the extra mile. So when you are discovering yourself, you stop take that as well and say, what kind of spiritual energy do I have from the different dimensions? Do I even have a belief system that enables me to have this sense of hope that, wait, although I, I failed this yesterday, although the business we started with my colleagues last year, that business collapsed, that does not mean that I cannot start a business and it works out. Although I failed this exam last semester, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm so stupid I cannot pass this exam. It simply means I have to do something differently. All of these things qualify for spiritual capital. So when you are discovering yourself, that is a dimension to look at. When you are discovering yourself, the other dimension to look at is social capital. Social capital simply meaning, who are you connected to? Who knows you? Who do you know? Who do you matter to? Are you someone who connects with people? Do you belong to any association? Do you belong to any club? If you started a small business today, it could be online. Do you have a network of friends that you could begin with and say, guys, check out my art pieces. Okay, I've started uh, a small restaurant. You guys come and support me. Do you have a network of people who believe in you, who you can bank on to start your, you, you know, as your market, for example? If you are in need of learning something, some digital skills, for example. You want to learn how to uh, make a PowerPoint uh, presentation. You want to learn how to develop a website. You want to open your own blog site because you want to start blogging. Do you have a friend who you know knows these things and you can bank on them that they can teach you that? That is social capital. Do you have a friend that can recommend you when there is a job connection? Do you have what it takes to actually be trusted? So when you are discovering yourself, you can look at that dimension as well. What is my social capital like? What do I have? Who do I have? You can look at your family, you can look at the, the classmates, you can look at the friends at church or at the mosque or wherever it is. You can look at the clubs you belong to. Some of you belong to clubs like, like Rotaract or Rotary, whatever it is. All of, this, all of these networks, that is social capital. So when you embark on the journey of discovering yourself, you begin in the inside of you. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my emotions like? Am I someone who loses my temper easily? Am I, when I look at myself, do I see a lot of people coming to me to seek for guidance? Therefore, does it mean that I have a potential to become a good counselor, a good advisor? And the third aspect is how you use your time, because time is also capital. I mean, the fourth aspect of capital, time as capital. How do you use capital? 
I would use time as capital. So remember I said that this discovering yourself goes hand in hand with discovering what's in your environment. So when you have discovered enough about yourself, your potentials, and also your weaknesses, what you do is to try and see what I was, I was talking to, to a friend recently, and this friend was, was sharing how uh, uh, he discovered that he was becoming an alcoholic because every time uh, he got money, the first thing he would think about is to go to a bar to the point that even when he didn't have money, he would be looking for it through his phone to figure out the friends that he has in the phone and is, is figuring out who should I borrow money from so that I can have alcohol. And so this person discovered that, wait a minute, I'm running into trouble because I'm becoming an alcoholic. And then he alerted his family members and told them, you know what, guys, I want you to know this. I need help because I'm getting addicted to alcohol. So this is fantastic. So when this friend of mine was sharing with me, I told him, you know what? You are already on the journey to the solution because the moment you discover that you are in this trouble and it's getting worse, already that's part of the solution this is how important self discovery is and nobody can do this for you by the way the rest of us can only give you tips but in your context looking at careers self discovery is very vital because it points at those areas that might become anchors of your career it shows you areas where you have good potential. And when you combine it with awareness about the environment, then you are able to figure out, for example, an institution where you can go and study a short course, maybe for about two weeks, and that course is sharpening your skills, for example, in counseling. That course is sharpening your skills in programming. That course is sharpening your skills in storytelling because, oh, by the way, <laughs> after this session, I want you to go online and, and, and check out, you Google about uh, storytelling. You will see it's a serious business, okay? It's a serious business. If you are a good storyteller, you can easily develop the skills of a good marketer. I don't know if you have jumped into uh, these buses, the buses that go to Kigali, sometimes even those, those coasters that go to Masaka or wherever. And this guy is selling, selling herbal medicines or medicine imported from China or wherever. And the person is telling a story in a compelling way that by the time they finish, you want to buy that medicine or whatever it is that they are selling because of the power of storytelling. So I want to end with some ultimate questions for you. Here I have four ultimate questions, and I think there, there, there's another on the next slide. One, how much do I truly know myself? And I'll give you homework. You go online and check out a concept called the Johari window and read more about it. Johari window, as it, it reads in the brackets there on point number one. How much, ask yourself the question, how much do I truly know myself? Two, how do I generally feel about myself and why? Because you know, how you feel about yourself many times depends on how much you know about yourself. Some people feel they are good for nothing. Some people feel mm, they, they, they can't make it like so and so. They are not good as so and so. And so they look down on themselves. Why? Because 
Maybe they have grown up in an environment where the voices of chicken are so loud. So loud that those voices suffocate your sense of true identity as an ego. So it's very important for you to figure out how do you feel about yourself and now to now begin finding out why do I feel this way about myself? If you feel, yeah, I can make it and, and so on, there is a reason why you feel like that. It's because maybe you have been tried and tested in other occasions. There was an occasion where you were ambushed at school and you were asked to give a vote of thanks to a speaker. And you discovered that, oh, you could actually confidently speak in public. So because of that precedent, now you feel confident about yourself. On the other hand also, if you feel low about yourself, there is a reason historically why you feel that way. So when you dig into the, the annals of your history, you'll be able to discover that incident that made you start feeling bad or uh, look down on yourself. Thirdly, what is it about me that adds real value to other people? You remember we said you only get the value for yourself in direct proportion to the value you give to other people. We said in the beginning, it's not about your papers, it's not about your qualifications. It is about the value you add to other people. So what is it about you that adds real value to other people? I want you to, to discover that. Because you know what? All of you who are following me on this uh, program tonight, this afternoon, all of you are already overqualified for life. All of you. By virtue of the fact that you can understand what I'm saying, it means your mind can already conceptualize. It means you can understand the language I'm using. It means you can learn anything you want to learn. So the most important thing is for you to know that thing about yourself that you have seen from history, it tends to add value to other people. That, oh, you know how to keep the environment in which you are. You know how to keep it very well. You remember the statement that Victoria said to Aleko Honorable, who was saying that video, what can you do? So what is it that you can do that adds value to other people? That is a very important thing to discover. I'm speaking to you because that's something I discovered. I discovered it later in my life. I discovered it to be, to be more precise in 1996 after reading a book called Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. It's not a book about growing rich in the sense of money. It's a book about understanding how your mind works. I read it in 1996, turning point. I usually say this with my presentations. So that book took me through a turning point. And it made me now realize, oh, so I can add value by speaking life into other people. So that's why if you ask me, what is my personal career mission? My personal career mission is simply helping individuals and organizations to discover their potential and become the best they can be. That's it. So I will use every aspect of me, whatever I have discovered about myself to make sure that I help other people to discover their potential and to become the best they can be. And I'll do the same for organizations. So discovering yourself is that important because it helps you to, to understand that aspect about yourself that adds value to other people. And then you seek to capitalize on it. You seek for all the resources and resourcefulness in your environment that helps you to sharpen that, to build that. So I will go online because I know online there are resources that help me to sharpen that. It is not by accident that I knew that video about Victoria Sechitole 
cycle because these are the kind of materials I look for in my environment. And I know that the internet is awash with a lot of such resources. Remember what I said about awareness about the environment. I know the institutions I can go to. I know when there is a seminar in a certain hotel or a certain university or wherever it is, a seminar that will add value to me, which sharpens what I have to, to give to other people. And fourth question, how do I plan to harness my potentials to define the value I add to other people? These points at your career vision. Given now what you know about yourself, how does that inform your sense of career vision. I want to remind you on this slide, those who attended my session last time, I used this very slide about the Rolex. And I said that you see, anything can be a tourist product, but the, the problem with Uganda's Rolex product when uh, Minister Chwanda was launching it as a tourist attraction, he and the, the, the technical team did not create a compelling story for the Rolex. So we don't have a story for the Rolex. So that's why the Rolex has not picked as it should have picked as a tourist product. Because I will tell you what sells a tourist product is not the physical uh, aspect of it. No, except for some geographical sceneries. But even for those geographical sceneries, if they have a compelling story around them, that sells them even the more. You see, I have a cup right here next to me. I can sell you this cup as a tourist product if I can succeed to create a compelling story about it. For example, if I told you that you see this cup, beautiful as it is, it was made, handmade by a five-year-old boy or girl. Hmm. You will now pick interest and you want to listen. And I can go on and on and on. As long as I tell a compelling story about that cup, you will want to listen. You will want to invite other people to come and listen to it. So the point I'm making here is that don't fall into Uganda's Rolex trap, which it's a fantastic product, but without a compelling story. If only we can develop a compelling story for this Rolex, it can become even a hot seller internationally as a Ugandan product. So what's your story? You need to create a compelling story about you. And that story will go before you. And it will sell you. And that story can only be built on who you are. What you have discovered about your, your, yourself, that is what you can coin the story around. And in conclusion, I am saying that time is the currency of life. Time is the currency of change. Everything that you ever wanted to do, everything, if today you have got an idea that has really inspired you and you are saying, oh, from today I have to, to go and discover myself. I have to read more literature, more books about self-discovery. I have to find tools on the internet about self-discovery. I have to look up more videos to, to inspire me and to give me a sense of direction. Whatever it is you want to do, the capital that you have to invest in it is time. So if you want to change, if you want to revolutionize your life, from today on, you must commit time to it by saying every day, for example, I will spend 30 minutes learning about myself. I will spend 30 minutes online figuring out the tools for self-discovery and self-development. The point I am making is you cannot take any action forward without invest, having to invest time in it. So in this sense, time is the ultimate capital that you have to use from this minute on in order for you to develop yourself further. And I'll leave you with this question. How do you plan to spend your time from now onwards?
I want to thank you very much for having been such an attentive audience. And now I think we can go into an open conversation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, our today's facilitator. Uh, the session is now open. I see a hand from Joyce. You can unmute. Yes, please, teacher. Go on, Joyce. Teacher. You can call me Ambrose, it's okay. Go on. Okay. Ambrose. Yeah. Yes. For me, I. What if I decided to reimagine re my life? Yeah. Eh? yeah. Um, but reimagine my life as a uh, what? A, a beautiful bird, the most beautiful bird. I reimagine my life as a peacock because it's beautiful. It's proud because it's made nicely. God created it nicely. That's my mm. reaction. Uh, that's that's fantastic. And and Joyce, I want you to to take this metaphor of the of the the peacock uh, very seriously in your life. I want okay. you to now also go ahead, go online and study the characteristics, the, the nature um, uh, and, uh, um, and the character, yes, the character of the peacock and see what you have to learn from the peacock in shaping your life. Um, the little I know about it is it likes displaying its beauty when it sees that there are people around, you know, to pay attention to it. Uh, I like using I like using using uh, lessons from the Bible. In the Bible, I've forgotten the specific scripture, but it says that you do not light a candle and hide it under the table or under the basket. If if whatever it is that God gave the peacock is beautiful then it displays it and that way it attracts attention to it to itself and among those people who come are the ones who will give it food to eat because they, they want to feed it so that it can they can continue enjoying its beauty so take this seriously uh joyce and study deeply the character of a peacock and see what you have to learn from it as far as self-discovery and self-development is concerned. Thank you very much. Can we have the next person? Next person is Joseph. Yes, Joseph, go on. Joseph, you can talk to us. He may be facing uh, challenges with the audio. Okay, uh, any other person? Uh, you could raise your hand. You're giving your submission. Or if you if if someone finds a challenge with their with their audio, they can type uh, in the chat room. Okay, uh, in the chat, most of the uh, conversation, they were thanking you, uh, saying the session is wonderful, the session is encouraging. Yes, uh, indeed, very educative. Yes. Joseph, you are still unable to unmute. You, you could type your, your comment, Joseph. Oh yeah, uh, Gerard is reminding me, someone asked, I, I did, uh, I responded 
that uh, you can find that book in St. Paul Bookshop on Campla Road, opposite King Fahad Plaza. You can find the book there. Uh, but also, there are, you can, it, if you are within Kampala, it can be, it can be delivered. I'm just writing the, So, okay, someone help me to, to type there the number my, my, in case someone wants to, to order directly. It is 0752 648 Any Any other? Kindly repeat the number. 0752-648-226. Someone can send a WhatsApp on that and uh, they, they, they could have the order uh, uh, shipped to them. Any other question or observation? If you have any other question or observation, you, you, you can raise it. Or if there is something that I did say that uh, someone did not get clearly, I, I, I'm glad to expound. Mr. Moderator, I think, uh, Bernard? Yes. Looks like I think we, we don't have do, more. Yeah, looks like we do not have yes, more questions. Yes, we do not have more conversation. Mm. Right. OK. So I think in that case, I hand over back to you. Yes, it's fine. We are uh, very grateful for your uh, session it was rich and i'm sure all our our participants uh the number I had to shoot up to around 68 and later it dropped yes. i'm sure they have benefited a lot so we are much grateful here thank you okay uh for all our participants we who are here uh, this session is brought to you by Yaka Digital Network. We have had more sessions before, and uh, today we have been having Mr. Chibuka Ambrose taking us through self-discovery and self-development. Uh, these sessions have been running uh, every Fridays. We have had seminars. We have had other skills and career development sessions. Uh, to do with gadgets, uh, to do with digital photography. And uh, our next session will be about uh, digital learning gadgets, handling apps and best practices. So we are all encouraged to attend to these sessions. They are always free of charge. Uh, digital Network is sponsoring all these ones. So more to this, we... We are really thankful to the founders of Yaka Digital Network. Uh, Yaka Digital Network, basically, they believe that education is the most powerful tool to you, uh, you can use to change the world. This was the quote by Nelson Mandela. Yes. And for that matter, uh, we are giving learning to many more who are not in class. 
we are enabling learning anytime, anywhere, and on any gadget. Mm. We are making learning less expensive and less demanding. We are making learning practically a continuous experience. We are making learning fun and enjoyable. And above all, we are fulfilling the promise of better education for all. So uh, among the participants here, we had uh, the Yaka learners who study from primary one up to senior six. And then others were visitors, parents, and all other stakeholders. So we are grateful. And for those new stakeholders, those new parents, someone may need to join Yaka e-learning. And uh, we have the following services. Uh, E-learning at Yaka is that uh, one can subscribe online. This can be uh, done through uh, www.yaka.cc slash subscribe to learn. And here you choose uh, a pocket friendly package, either 100,000 Ugandan shillings, that is for monthly, or a yearly package at 500,000 Ugandan shillings. And then for those who may need uh, individual subjects, maybe you need notes of primary one, notes of primary two, notes of senior three, all these are available. Each subject is at, is at 10,000. Then in case you need uh, a bundle of the notes, let's say primary six notes, these are at 30,000. Any class you need uh, in primary, all notes are at 30,000. Then if you need notes for a secondary class, this is at 50,000, and we normally call these ones downloads. You can access them via www.yaka.cc slash shop. We also have Educare service, with Educare, you can choose to do revision. You can choose to access our content online. And this can be accessed through www.educare.bz, where you can read from the site for a whole year at only 50,000. So Yaka and Educare, all these apps are accessed via Play Store. You can download Yaka. DN app from Play Store. You can also download Educare app from Play Store, create an account there, and then you get these services. So in case we have questions, we can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand and you ask for more clarification. Otherwise, we thank you very much for listening and for your active participation. And, and Bernard, uh, we want to thank Yaka for uh, generously providing these services to the nation. Uh, education needed to be democratized. Uh, and, and this is what you guys are doing, that a lot of resources are able to be accessed by many of us and also for organizing these, uh, these sessions. Thank you very much for contributing to the building of the nation. Okay, thank you, Ambrose. I uh, see in the chat, uh, Levitkas has a question. Yes, Levitkas, you could raise your hand or continue type your question in the chat. We shall respond to it. His hand is up. Teacher? Yes. How can I make an account according on what you say? Okay, uh, if you want to create an account, let's say on Yaka, uh, mm -hmm. you, I can share my screen with you. 
uh, you could go to your web browser and you type www.yaka.cc slash register. I'm sending this in the chat. When you go to that link, it should be able to display for you a page where you fill in all your information. I'm putting in the chat. So that link helps you create an account on Yaka. You put in your username, put your email, create a password, put all your names, choose your country, and the rest. Then after, you can. Okay, hope you have answered that. Yes, thank you, teacher. Welcome. So I've got my essay written, and I've been working on it for about a week. And now I'm going to show you how. And in case we have no more questions, either in the chat or by rising hands, we could end the meeting from here. We thank everyone for participating. Don't miss the next session on Friday.